Welcome back everybody. All right. If you're tuning in for the first time, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, give us a like. After the video, if you watch the whole thing, drop us a comment down in there. Whatever it is that you feel like you need to say, want to say, boom, drop it. So, here we go. So, yeah, we're back at this again. I got the whole front end apart. What am I doing, you might ask? Well, if you watch the uh, last video that I put up about this machine, at the very end, I was telling you what I was going to do. So, basically, we are going to put on some CT Raceworks lower control arms. Reason why. This arm right here, I've already replaced it once with the factory upgrade. It got bent. So, I could feel it in the steering wheel. It was a little bit of a pull. So, being the second time that I have bent this one, I decided to go ahead and upgrade with something that I am not going to destroy as easily. So, both lowers, we're going to go ahead and replace those. Uh, I do highly recommend that if you're considering any of the stuff that I've ever done to this, like rock lights, uh, anything that you're going to have to require, taking this front end off, uppers, lowers, uh upgrading the winch putting on rock lights um your winch uh, if i said that or not um if you're planning on upgrading anything that requires taking the front end apart do it all at once i have learned i feel like this is the hundredth time that i have taken this front end apart i'm learning well, I have learned uh, new things about it, uh, better methods, easier methods. So, I'm going to continue disassembling the front end. Um, first off, going to have to get the radiator loose, but we got to the, the bulkhead. I've done this once before, so I'm going to take, I think it's these Torx bits off, and then there's two right in the very back underneath that part of the skid plate, and this whole, co the whole thing comes off. Then... If you look from the side there will be a nut here and then a nut down here which you can access um, there will, I think these were 10 millimeters there's two on each side one here one up top one here one down below so we're gonna take those up and then take the radiator and get a bungee cord and strap it up now something that you see and you may want to ask a question I will answer it now so if you see this right here, I've got these ratchet straps. So I went ahead and compressed the springs. Now you can, or the shocks, whatever you want to call them, the cool over system. I went ahead and compressed them while it was down on the ground. Um, I stood on top of it, added extra weight, compressed it, kept cranking, cranked one side, cranked the other side. Reason being is, is I've been through this once. So if you look at this lower control arm, you can see right over there, there's a skid plate. Now the way that these control arms work, you have to unbolt them but then you slide them forward well at the angle that they are right now is the way that you have to put them on and off well once you lift this thing up in the air this will push everything down your knuckle if you don't take your knuckle and your axle and stuff completely apart i don't recommend it's just more time consuming but if you take if you don't take any of that apart this will actually make contact with your knuckle you can't get it at the right angle and it really 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 becomes frustrating to get your lower control arms back on so we're going to try this new method ratchet strapped up to the top up here I have royally crank these bad dudes down and well we're going to go at it so hope you guys enjoyed today's video all right so here we go so if you look at this one right here, I've already got the ball joint in it. I decided to go back with the factory ball joints. Um, wanted to do, I think it uh, might have been Keller or Kryptonite. One of them was on back order, the other one's outrageously priced. So I just went ahead with the factory ones. I've not had any problems out of them. The ones that's on the machine is still good. I reused one side. Um, so they're pretty easy. The one thing that I do know from dealing with parts on the 21 is the powder coat on the inside of these. Now, I have frozen these, and 
they don't necessarily want to go in there as easy. And so basically all I'm doing is, is I take a flapper wheel on my Dremel and kind of clean that mess up, get the powder coat out of there so they kind of slip in a little bit easier. Well, that's not how that's supposed to work. All right, take two. So, I guess it loosened up on me. I'm gonna tighten it back down. But as I was saying with the flapper wheel, You should have the ability to almost put it in there by yourself uh, without any assistance. I think on some of them before I have used a little bit of grease to help them out there. So we're going to try to I know that you can significantly use a ball joint press tool uh, but I have tried that. The problem with using a uh, press tool is, is this lip right here. So trying to find anything that's big enough to go around this hole right here and not be wider than this. So this is the method that I figured out that works. Works for me. Maybe you got something different. But anyways... We're almost there, just a couple wax, and we should be able to get the pin in for the C clip. So, there she is. Alright, sorry, we had a small interruption there. Alright, so, I've got it in, gonna get my C clamp, uh, get it seated in here, get it on, not forget about it. I always hate C-clamps. I hate C-clamp pliers, too. They piss me off. I always have better luck out of a pair of damn screwdrivers, flathead screwdrivers, than I have damn C-clamp pliers. I swear to God there should be, like, a better invention than these pieces of shit. I know the world uses a hell out of C clamps, but I hate them with a passion. Boom. On there. Check to make sure that I'm in the groove. I'm in the groove. We're good to go. So let's talk bushings real quick. The bushings that I decided to use this go around when I ordered these orms, I got the, uh, the CT uh, bushings that they had on their site. They seem comparable with the price of about everyone else's. Um, supposed to just be able to slide right in, probably bonk them in there. Uh, the center piece that goes in here, the sleeve, I'm going to reuse the factory ones. They come right out. Shouldn't have any problems. Um, should be able to just bump them right in. From what I know, you're not supposed to put any grease on them or don't require grease. I don't think so. Um, There is a grease fitting uh, that goes back in these off the factory orange. We will put that on there and we'll run some, put us some grease through these things after the initial install. That way they're not running dry. So 
Yeah. Ta-da! Not that bad. So, let's get to swapping these bad boys out. Well, unfortunately, the rain has set in for today. Again, I was hoping that I would beat it. But I'm also losing light. I don't have my bright light and stuff is not here so I can work at night and make a cool video. So hopefully we'll pick back up with this tomorrow and get it finished and all back together while I got time to do so. So, so rain went away. I kept cranking out. I went ahead and got the uh, bulkhead of the front off on the back here. So, on the back, there is a small metal plate in the front that connects just like, I guess you'd say, the double shear gusset kit. So, you have to take the nut off of both sides to be able to get one arm off. So, I have both arms off. Um, you like my little bungee cord in here. Got a bungee cord hooked to this and then actually got it zip tied up. I did not take the 10 millimeters out of here. I took them out of here. There is small sleeves that come out of there. Make sure you put those back. Also, notable mention on the radiator. I'm sorry it's zoomed in so far, but I can't have the light and the camera on at the same time being zoomed out. There is little pieces that go in here for your bolts. Sort of like a... I'll show you. Like that. So this one right here is backwards, but make sure you put those in and start the bolt before you initially put the radiator itself back down with the bulkhead. Now the bulkhead had one more bolt in it that I forgot about. If you look right here, there's this little hole that goes through the center. That's this bad boy, so don't forget about it. There's also a lot of mud that stays trapped up in here, so... You may not see it uh, when you get that bottom skid plate cover off. Just clean all this out and you will remember you'll see it. Because if not, then you'll be like, why is this not coming off? So, the ball joints was a 15 and a 15. It was easy to get off. Those nuts were easy to get to. Uh, the biggest pain in the butt was... Where's that? Where's that? This right here. So with the smart lock, um, it's really hard to get to the back of these. Now I could get to this one with a ratchet with a uh, shallow socket, but this one right here, I just kind of crammed a wrench in there, was able to lock to it. It's 18 millimeter, and I left it there. I got more 18s just for that reason. So we're going to start getting these arms on. Well, here's finished product after getting the arms back on um the ending of the last clip the sun went down on me i didn't have a sufficient amount of light so recording was not very well and the gimbal started acting up so everything pretty straightforward as far as i explained taking it apart um one thing that i did do was i trimmed my skid plate down here a little bit uh, to add a little more clearance to the arms. I really don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I did and it gives you a little more working room and honestly where that skid plate was at and where the arm angles down There's really nothing that it's there to protect that I see and So I made it a little bit easier As you can see from the front view these arms are pretty beefy. They're heavy duty. Uh, I'm excited to try them out on the 64 inch machine. You can see on the other side, I trimmed the skid plate. I used a rotary tool. Pretty easy to get in there, get to. It's not very frustrating. It takes only a matter of minutes. So now the last step that I got is to finish putting the front end back together and calling it a day on this one so that is the end of today's video about the 2019 x3 xrc uh, ct raceworks arm install um, there's a link below for merchandise uh, if you guys are interested go ahead click that link check it out pick you up something cool uh, 
don't forget to like comment subscribe share help us out get our channel out there uh we're growing every day we appreciate everybody's support uh see you on the next video